Happy Friday, everybody. If you can see, we got some clouds, a little bit of rain here this morning in Arizona. One of like 30 days a year that it rains here, so not complaining at the end of the day. But we are just heading into the clinic here. We got uh, two, maybe three procedures today. Uh, first procedure is some PRP for some shoulder pain, neck pain, and knee pain. And then our second case is a stellate ganglion and cervical sympathetic chain block for a patient who has some, uh, some chronic anxiety, a little bit of mild PTSD, and then some tinnitus. And then our third case might be a, uh, a knee and a low back. Uh, depends on uh, if that patient decides to move forward with that. But that is our day so far. We are gonna get going here. I'm super excited and uh, see you on the other side. All right, everybody, we just wrapped up our Friday here at Regenerative Performance. We ended up having two procedures today. I'm gonna to talk through the first procedure really, really in depth because that's the one I really wanna focus on. Then we'll briefly touch on our second procedure. Our first procedure today was a platelet-rich plasma injection, so PRP. For this patient, we treated several different areas because he was having pain in several different areas. That's gonna be the neck, the shoulder, and then the knee. And so on our physical exam a few weeks ago, we had determined that a lot of his neck pain and actually some of his shoulder pain was coming from his cervical facet joints. These are the joints that are gonna lie between each of the levels of the vertebra connecting C6 to C7 as an example, or C4 to C5. Now, this very, very rarely happens, but on one of our tests for the facet joints called Sperling's Maneuver, we actually recreated his anterior shoulder pain with this maneuver. So when we tested the facet joints, we actually recreated some of his anterior shoulder pain, which is really, really crucial to understand because there are so many times when providers are not doing these thorough enough evaluations, patient comes in and they just have shoulder pain, but they're not getting a neck assessment at the same time and understanding that there can be this connection between them where we can get pain in the shoulder, front side and back side, that's actually coming from the neck. The other things that, so with that then, what we did was we did a thoracic erector spinae plane hydrodissection at the level of T1. Our goal there is to bathe the medial cutaneous branches that are coming off the dorsal rami at a multi-level area. So we are trying to get the fluid to bathe those nerves roughly from about C5, C6, down to about the T2 region in the hopes to calm down some of the inflammation around those facet joints. And then we also treated inside the facet joints from C5, C6, all the way down through C7, T1. So we treated that for the neck. Then some of his shoulder pain was actually due to some different changes that he had in the shoulder. And so our physical exam testing showed that there might be some supraspinatus impingement uh, and that there was a little bit of supraspinatus tendinosis Again, not a tendonitis because this is a long-term chronic issue for the patient. And so under ultrasound guidance, we injected into the supraspinatus tendon, into the tendon anthesis, which is where the tendon is attaching into the bone. And then also to help out some of the nerves on the anterior aspect, we did what I'm calling a sub, an anterior 
subdeltoid fascial plane hydrodissection. So we talked about this a while back in a different episode, but basically what we are doing is between the rotator interval and the deltoid muscle, we are trying to hydrodissect the fascial plane between those two. The reason for this is that there are a lot of peripheral cutaneous nerves in that area that are gonna innervate these structures on the front side of the shoulder and getting a large amount of fluid. So in this case, it was platelet poor plasma with some 5% dextrose, a very low dose dexamethasone and and ropivacaine, we are trying to calm down the inflammation around these nerves and help them to repair and restore themselves. So that way they're no longer painful long-term. One of the other things in his shoulder that he was having is thoracic outlet syndrome. So the patient had some paresthesias along the ulnar nerve, or basically the, the, fourth, the fourth and the fifth digit along the inside of the arm that would get worse uh, in the morning, so after sleep, and then would usually progressively get better throughout the day and would sometimes aggravate with heavy uh, workouts for the chest shoulder region. So our physical exam on that one showed that we did not have any entrapment of the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve and the forearm. We didn't have any entrapment of the ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel. What we actually had was an entrapment of the medial cord of the brachial plexus underneath pec minor. So our testing for thoracic outlet showed that there was no impingement in the inter scalene uh, area, so between anterior and middle scalene, but we did have underneath pec minor, we had some compression, and because of the distribution that he's getting, we can assume and we know that it is the medial cord. So what we did here was, again, all this done under ultrasound guidance, we advanced the needle underneath the pec minor muscle to do a fascial hydrodissection of the fascia that contains the brachial plexus and the pec minor. We also additionally went inside the fascia that's containing the, the brachial plexus and the axillary artery and hydrodissected in there in order to give some support for the healing of a brachial or the medial cord of the brachial plexus that is gonna be a little bit inflamed because we know that because we're getting some symptoms. So our goal there is a type of non-surgical decompression where we're actually creating temporary space the fluid that we inject in will get absorbed over time, but we provide some temporary space, which helps the helps the nerve to heal because there's less compression on the nerve. When there's less compression on the nerve, the nerve inflammation tends to go down. And we also included the nutritive substances or so platelet poor plasma, which is giving you really rich in growth factors. We have the 5% dextrose, which helps to calm down some of that neurogenic inflammation. And then some low dose ropivacaine and dexamethasone, again, further to help calm down that inflammation inflammation. And so we are essentially just trying to get all that inflammation to calm down, doing that through a hydrodissection approach. So that's what we did there for the shoulder. Our knee. So our physical exam a few weeks ago demonstrated that the patient was having, uh, he likely had a a lateral meniscus tear quite some time ago, about 10 or so years ago, that he never really did anything about. It didn't really impede him too, too much, but he does still have some chronic pain after he has heavy workouts in the gym and things like that. On testing, he also had pain over the lateral collateral ligament. Now under ultrasound today, when we injected both inside the joint for the lateral meniscus and into the lateral collateral ligament, we de did see that there was some calcification in the lateral collateral ligament. And when we injected into that area, we did recreate some of the pain that he was getting on the lateral aspect of the knee. Always really good for us to see is that pain recreation because it helps us to be more confident that our approach is going to provide longer lasting relief for the patient. So that was our first procedure of the day. And then our second procedure of the day was another stellate ganglion block and cervical sympathetic chain block. The stellate ganglion block was performed at the level of C6 and the cervical sympathetic chain block was performed at the level of C4. We've done a lot of videos on these before, but basically what we are doing is we are trying to sever the connection or I should say dampen the connection between the brain and the adrenal glands such that when patients with really severe anxiety or PTSD, when they have a triggering event, their body does not have the 
typical adrenaline dumping that can happen or that does happen a lot with this chronic anxiety and PTSD. So we use a long acting local anesthetic called Ropivacaine and we inject it in those two areas between the fascia of, or well, between the muscles of longus coli and longus capitis in the fascia plane between those two. The patient had a really great Horner's response, which means that we had a successful stellate ganglion and cervical sympathetic chain block today. And we're excited to track her symptoms, which we use two different ways for that. They're questionnaires, the PCL, uh, sometimes we use the PCLC for civilians, PCL5 for uh, military and vets, along with the ASQ, which is an anxiety symptom questionnaire. So we're going to track those over time with her, see if we need to repeat these in the future. But again, these are going to be used in conjunction with the counseling and therapy that this patient is also going through for her anxiety and PTSD. So that is everything we had today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.